And Paul is saying, if you're a Christian, you don't need a babysitter anymore. Hi, and welcome back to our YouTube channel here at Mundelein Church of the Nazarene. The purpose of this channel is to create a lot of content that might help you understand not only the Christian faith, but more specifically, a lot of the New Testament. Um, and so we're in the middle of a series called The First Book. This is episode 7. Uh, the first book is an examination of the very first book to be written in the New Testament, which is the book of Galatians, around A.D. 48. And it was written around the first big crisis issue in the church, which was, will the Gentiles be allowed into the church, and if they are, what are the requirements? What are we going to require them to do? And so right away we have this divide between a Jewish-centered perspective, and now all these Gentiles have come in, and, and how are we going to handle this new crowd? And so that's what it's about. Last week we were went further in Galatians chapter 3, and that's where we'll be again this week. I've skipped a couple of verses, and I want to move down to verse 19. This is a very important section of Galatians. Remember, this is all in support of Paul's premise, which was expressed in chapter 2. Um, for we know that we are justified not by observing the works of the law, but through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. And so this is another argument in favor of that. Paul is arguing, after having said earlier in chapter 3, that the law didn't really do much but bring a curse on us. Now, a Jew would have reacted very negatively to that. Paul, the law was given by God. How can you uh, relegate it to such minor status? So here's what Paul says. What then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. So right away, Paul's saying a couple different things. Um, he said it was added later. What does that mean? So some of the verses I just skipped said God made his relationship with Abraham. And then over 400 years passed before the law was even given to Moses. If the law is the centerpiece of life, then how come there was over 400 years without law? The, the clear intent of Paul is to say, wait a minute, perhaps the law was, is not the foundation you think it is. And what he's telling his readers here is very simple. The law was added because we humans just messed up. And we needed something to keep us from damaging ourselves even more than we had before. And so he said, when our transgressions, now that word is a very specific word. That doesn't just mean general sin. It means stepped across the line. We knew it. And it was added in response to our rebellion. Um, and then he goes on and says this, Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? And in the strongest language available, and I mean the strongest language available, absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would have certainly come by the law. But Scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. So Paul's saying a couple very important things. First, he says, "Is you have you you've been wrong on law on on the law all along here? The law does not give life. The law does not make someone alive. The law does not even make someone good." All it does is it puts guardrails around us, keeps us from doing even worse things. And so it doesn't impart life. If you pursue it, don't be surprised to get to a place where you don't feel that alive. Then he goes on. He says, before the, this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, 
locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. This is not a very positive picture. The law, we were imprisoned, we were imprisoned by the law. We were locked up until faith should be revealed. And then this word, where it says, the law was put in charge. That's not really good translation. The word there is, the law was our pedagogue. Now let me talk about the pedagogue for a second. If you were a wealthy Greek home, you hired, there was a certain kind of hired person, a slave, which was highly paid. You were like a very important babysitter. You lived in the home. You would walk with the child to school. You would walk home. You would drill them in their lessons. You would talk to them about rhetoric and learning and language, and you would often enforce discipline very, very sternly. Corporal punishment was a part of the world there. Think of some of us have the picture of the old nuns in the Catholic school. If you misspelled a word, would wrap your knuckles with a ruler. Well, you're getting a little picture of a pedagogue. The law was our stern babysitter. And so anytime we would maybe drift a little bit, would pull us back. We would be wrong, would remind us we should be right. It's a very much a picture of what the law was like. Paul was saying, you couldn't help yourself. So God had to do something to restrain you, to put guardrails around so that you'd be safe. Now, I don't see them much anymore, but back in an older day, the mom would put the baby in a playpen and would go and do some, some work around the house, and the baby could only get so far. Um, that's the picture. Now sometimes we'll put gates across stairs and across doors to keep people in an area because we don't want anything bad to happen. That's what Paul's saying the law is. The law was never meant to make you good. It was meant to keep you safe from doing even something more harmful than you're doing right now. And so the law was literally our babysitter, was put in charge. And then it says this, But now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. See, this is the heart of Paul's argument. Now that Jesus has come and died and rose again, there really is no need for the law. If you're still living life by the rule book, you are living very much a life like you still need a babysitter. And Paul is saying, if you're a Christian, you don't need a babysitter anymore. You should know. When I was a kid and very young, my mom would say, if I was playing in the yard and we would maybe be playing catch and the ball would go out in the street, she would yell, stop, look both ways. Well, I don't need someone to do that anymore. There's a host of things we just don't need. Paul is telling us, if we're still looking at the rule book in order to navigate life, when it comes to spiritually speaking, our life is no different than if we were an adult now and still needing a babysitter. It doesn't serve us any purpose. In fact, it hinders our development. And so Paul looks at these Gentiles in Galatia who are being tempted to follow all the Jewish laws in order to become fully a part of the church. You had these uh, Jewish Christians who were telling them, hey, Paul's a great guy. Yes, it's all by faith, but Genesis 17 says, every male among you must be circumcised. So if you want to be fully part of God's family, you've got to follow all these laws as well. And so they're torn, and they want to show how committed they are, but Paul's saying, wait a minute, if you do that, you're acting like you still need a babysitter, and you don't. Thanks for joining us this week. Uh, come back to us next week. We'll, we'll be the, the very last few verses of chapter 3 and start with chapter 4 in this examination of the very first book of the New Testament. We'll look forward to seeing you next week.